So I was thinking about what exactly to talk about today, how to start al-fajr, and in light of the fact that we are in the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal, and this is the month where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, and this is the month wherein he departed from this dunya. I thought it was um, suitable to talk about why do we need to study the, the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What's the need to study the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So inshallah, I'm just going to share a few reasons. And hopefully this does inspire us and motivate us to really go into the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and learn, learn more about uh, this man. First of all is that we do understand that there is no person who has been documented whose life has been documented and recorded as much as the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I say this without any exaggeration. When you go and you start to study other people, people in general, people who have had an impact in society, people who have, had a made, a, who have made impacts on a country level and so forth, you study their lives and you'll probably find one book, two books, few articles here and there. But subhanAllah, when you study the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are seerah books after seerah books on the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if it, that was not enough, we find the shama'il of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if that was not enough, there there are so many ulama and scholars who've written different aspects. They have shed light on the life of the Prophet ﷺ from different angles just to provide for us who Rasulullah ﷺ was. So this is why there is no doubt in the fact that this is the most documented man. This is a man that after whom the, his name Muhammad we find that in this ummah, in the time that we live in today, the most kept name is Muhammad. And not only that, but we find that this is a man that subhanAllah, a lot of times we don't even realize and we don't contemplate about, about this. But this is a man whose name is being mentioned 24-7 around the globe. Every single time when there is an adhan that is taking place, any time around the world, at some small masjid or a big masjid, a small city, a big city, any time the adhan is taking place and the uh, mu'adhan is reciting and he's saying, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Think about this 24 7. No matter how many people are trying to discredit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're trying to smear the reputation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, this is a man whose name is mentioned 24 7 around the globe. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he meant when he says, and so in Shirah, wa rafa'ana laka dhikrak. We will elevate the state status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He elevates the status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another reason why we say the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is simply to get to know who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. We cannot know the morals, the akhlaq, the character, the demeanor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Qur'an. We have to go back into the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I want to know the ibadah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't find that in the Quran. We find that in the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his ma'amalat like? What was, how was his interaction um, between him and other people on different levels, different people in the society? We learned that not in the Quran, but we learned that from the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it goes without saying that in Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That the best example that you can find, no matter what situation you find yourself in, the best example that you can go back to and you can resort to is the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another reason why we say the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is simply to increase our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's a, you know, really, it's a domino effect if you think about it. The more we study the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more we will love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the more we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more 
it will promote us and motivate us to stay the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanAllah, it's, it's a known fact. When you really want to know someone, when you love someone, then you always go back to his life. We always are taught all of our life and we're going to always be taught for the rest of our life that how much we need to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The only way to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is none other through the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is why if we truly say that I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I need to emulate my life behind the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that can only be achieved through studying the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another reason why we say the seerah of the Prophet is to better understand the Quran. There are so many aspects of the Quran that we don't understand without going to the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions um, the life of the Prophet alayhi salam, or we find in the seerah that there was a period after the first wahi that there was no wahi. And at that time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa began thinking to himself that what I had initially experienced, was that just a one-off experience? Is that just a one-off story? Am I going to keep on experiencing this or not? And he wanted to experience this. And that is why there was a sense of, of hopelessness that had come into the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down Surah wa duha And in this, this this is a this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that just like the sun it appears from behind the horizon and there is light that comes and eliminates darkness likewise there is a certain level of hopelessness darkness in your life but we will remove that and we will send a wahi you cannot understand surah wa duha without saying the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not only that, but there are so many aspects of the Qur'an that if you do not go back to the seerah, you cannot understand the Qur'an. So another reason of studying the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to better understand um, the Qur'an. Another, another reason why we study the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is because it provides us hope. It provides us optimism that no matter what the situation is, I will always find a way out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a way out. And how do we know that from the seerah? Brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, when you study the life of the Prophet we will learn that no matter what situation you and I, we find ourselves in, we will find a similar situation in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Hopelessness, how often do we find ourselves in a situation of hopelessness? You will find cases in the life of Rasulullah ﷺ where he also faced hopelessness. When you feel that the entire world is against you, there was also times in the life of the Prophet ﷺ where he felt that the entire world was against him. When you feel that you are in a financial constraint, you will find the solution in the life of Rasulullah ﷺ. When you feel that you are so sick or there are other situations that you are in, you will find an example in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. If you feel that you or, oh, you or your family is under attack, you will find an example in the life of Rasulullah ﷺ. No matter what situation we find ourselves in, subhanAllah, when you go into the life of Rasulullah ﷺ, you will find that the Prophet ﷺ also faced similar situations. And why would they not be? You know, people have asked, why would Rasulullah be tested again and again and again? And why would he go through all these difficulties in life? Because brothers and sisters, there always has to be an example for all of us. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we understand. And people have asked this question. Rasulullah is the most loved man by, um, by to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why would Allah put Rasulullah time after time, situation and difficult situation, one after another in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is because there has to be an example for, for all of us. There has to be a marja for all of us that we can always go back to and find hope. And that is the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is why Allah also says in the Quran, وَكُلَّنَّ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ Man, Why did Allah mention all these stories in the Quran? 
only to solidify our hearts. Our hearts become weak. We're human beings. It's natural. But if we have something that can reinforce that iman and reestablish that hope that may have been lost, then we will find that in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another important thing that we also learn is we learn the the, the proofs of prophethood when you say the life of the Prophet ﷺ. When you ask people, what are the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ? You ask any child, you ask even adults, what are the miracles of Rasulullah ﷺ? Some will say the Quran, some will say such and such, and they'll give you different stories. But the reality is that his entire life is a miracle. SubhanAllah, there are scholars that, such as Imam al bayhaqi who has written the La Ilu Nabuwa, where they have shed light on the different aspects of Rasulullah. And think about it for a moment. A leader. How can we tell Rasulullah was a prophet? What is the proof that he was a prophet? First of all, is when you study his entire life from beginning to end. Never would you see Rasulullah contradict uh, in his own statements. When you see leaders of today, they will always contradict in their statements. Rasulullah never would you see that his qawl and his amal would contradict each other. Whatever he said, he lived by that. And whatever he did, he always preached that. This is why we find that this is why Rasulullah was such an amazing figure. We also find in Imam al bayhaqis work that if, that if you said all the the predictions given by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we find one by one whether predictions at that time whether predictions about the future the fitnas we find in our books of a hadith kitabul fitan all these fitnas that Rasulullah is talking about, one by one, we have either seen them, we have witnessed them, observed them, or we might, our upcoming generations may observe them. But the fact is that you cannot call this person a liar if every single thing that he said is coming out to be true. So when you study the life of Rasulullah we find these kind of things that cannot, that really, really comes, it really pushes us to one conclusion that there is no way that this man is a fraud that this man is unreliable but every single thing that comes from Rasulullah is absolutely reliable and the last thing that I will say which is actually the last two things number one another thing is that the reason why we say the life of the Prophet is to learn how to revive our ummah today we find ourselves in a very difficult situation in fact if you go back perhaps to the 70s, the 80s, and comparing our time to that time, Alhamdulillah, the Ummah has recovered significantly. At that time, you will not find Hufad, you will not find Hufad, you will not find Masajid, but Alhamdulillah, you know, we, there was, there's been sort of a revival in the Ummah in a certain capacity. We find so many Ulama nowadays, more Ulama than, than at that time. And not only that, but so many Hufal today, and so many Masajid, and so many publications and so forth. Alhamdulillah, to in a certain degree, there's been a revival in the Ummah. But if you want to study how to revive any community, any society, or any Ummah, you go back to the, <coughs> to the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because when Rasulullah Sallallahu was sent out as a prophet, there was nothing is there was nothing established in Mecca. The Prophet ﷺ had to start from ground zero and he had to work his way up. So this is why if you want to study revival and how to revive a community and so forth, we learn that from Rasulullah wasallam. And the last thing that we have to do when it comes to the seerah of Rasulullah is to reflect on the lessons and the morals and the reflections that we learn from Rasulullah Why is it that today, many of us, we don't have any inclination to say the life of the Prophet It's because for so many years, in Sunday school, when our kids are being taught seerah, it's always about names. It's always about numbers. How many people participated in the battle of Badr? How many people were in this battle and that battle? And which Sahabi did this and which Sahabi did that? And I'm not saying that they're not important. They are important, but at the same time, the key purpose of the seerah is to learn the ref into is to focus on the reflections and the lessons from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And subhanallah, even when you say the life of the Prophet deeply, I don't mean 
like, you know, in a casual way. But deeply, when you study his life from the Prophet Sallallahu you will learn that all the issues that you and I, we face today, even issues that are not even relevant to us, that are going on in our society, you will find some, some instruction and you'll find something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he either said or did that can shed that can shed light on that matter. We need to focus on the reflections. All the time when you say the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just don't focus on who did what and how many people, but go into the lessons and reflections. What can we learn from this story? That is why, because we have not focused on this area, this is why our kids today have no motivation of saying the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, many adults don't have that motivation of learning about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Personally, I teach the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I teach it to seniors. I, seniors meaning uh, high school seniors but when I teach them I don't focus on necessarily just numbers and names I personally focus on that what do we learn from this particular story and there's so many gems that we find in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make us from amongst those who will be close to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of judgment and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who really learn and implement the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in their lives ameen rabbil alamin jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا Amen. Uh...